Hey, well, our 8 o'clock service was kind of neat because it was dark. I mean, we've had like a month and a half and not much sunshine glowing in here, and we're like, oh my gosh, maybe the Lord's coming. Hey, I'm really excited. If you didn't know, University of Kentucky just wiped Tennessee off the map when it came to foot. Just kidding, Audra. I know you guys just pummeled us. <laughs> Hey, we're really glad you're with us. Welcome to Only First Methodist Church. I'm really excited about getting people touched by the Holy Spirit. We've got a special service today, and, and we're just really looking forward to God doing something. It's fifth Sunday, and on fifth Sunday, our worship team gets a break. And uh, we are blessed by the House of Waxlers leading our worship. And we just sing some of the quality hymns that are out there that we've been singing and you're really going to lo love their selection they picked up today also we're celebrating saints the saints of our church that have gone to be in the lord in the last year so uh mandy's got a couple announcements for you so turn it over to mandy good morning <clears throat> for feed your faith this wednesday the good news class is providing the meal which will be pizza salad and desserts there will be a short informational meeting next Sunday after both services for those interested in going to the Operation Christmas Child Processing Center in Aurora, Illinois. Cindy Bailey will need to know by November 9th if you plan to attend. On November 11th, there will be a, the second annual Thanksgiving Bash. The youth will be hosting this from 6 to 8 p.m., uh, we'll be in the fellowship hall with food, snacks, drinks, fellowship, and board and card games. Once 8 p.m. hits, the adults will be kicked out, and the youth will head to the venue for games, hangout, snacks, and drinks. At midnight, we will dismiss for parent pickup. Make sure to bring your favorite board or card games. Uh, and next Sunday, we get an extra hour of sleep. It's daylight, it's that whatever they want to call that thing, you get an extra hour of sleep. And if you show up early, we'll have something for you to do. Okay? So, uh, looking forward to that. It just, it, this year has just blown by. It's just blown by. So, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have come, that the family of God has come to the house to lift their hearts, to worship, to hear, to respond to your word. So, Lord, we just surrender this all to you. It's yours. Have your way on earth as it is in heaven, right here, right now, in Jesus' strong name. Let's stand and let's sing.
God is good. And all the time. Yes, we're not following the bulletin. Turn to somebody and shake their hands. Great to have you with us this morning. Amen. <laughs> morning, Jay. Morning. Amen. Amen. Hi, Dave. Hey, hey guys. I was wondering where y'all were. <laughs> About 10, 14, we had six people in here. I'm like, well, this is going to be an interesting Sunday. That's okay. That's okay. Love, really good to see you guys today. We're going to be celebrating uh, some of our uh, church members that have gone to be with the Lord in this last year. Um, we call it like our All Saint uh, time of remembrance. And uh, as people of the faith... It's so important for us to understand that Jesus paid it all. You can't get there without him. And if you're trying, you're really lost. But I know uh, um, of, of our friends that are up here that they professed who Jesus was. And, uh, and some of them were big vocals. Kathleen Hill, is he done with my mansion, Pastor? I sure hope. And then she would always talk about just being close with Jesus. And, 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 and Floyd was so involved with, uh, with so many uh, parts of our church many years back. And, and Ron and uh, so many others. And, and Joanne was our, our prayer warrior for our church. Although she was bedridden for what, the last 15 years, she, was, she, she prayed for us all the time. So praise God. So as we go uh, in this time to preparation, we're going to... Uh, embrace a creed of our faith uh, the apostles creed so i'm going to invite you to stand if you're able and will you uh, help me share what it means to be a follower of christ called a christian i believe in god the father almighty the creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge both the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we have our second hymn of the morning. Patiently, the cross of 
remembering our saints. That third verse. When we shall be forever with the Lord. When disappointment, grief, and fear are gone. Sorrow forgot. Love's purest joy restored. <laughs> be still, my soul. When change and tears are past, all safe and blessed, we shall meet at last. That's really good theology there. <laughs> As we come together, let us pray. Remember, O oh Lord, those who have died and have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith especially those from whom we now pray. May these and all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness, and peace. Let us remember Joanne Smallwood. Let us remember Mary Redman. Let us remember Sandra Brandt. Let us remember Sandra McGregor. Let us remember Kathleen Hill. Let us remember Floyd Yinkst. And let us remember Ron Leist. I have a final candle here. Many of you have lost loved ones this last year. People that were just rocks of faith for you. Maybe family members, maybe next door neighbors, maybe, you know, friends from school. But if you have someone who's passed this last year and you like to stand up, just stand up and say, Lord, thank you for the saint that is now with you. I just invite you to stand at this time if there's anybody in your life that you passed. Amen. 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 For those saints in our lives who are now with Jesus. You may be seated. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. And because I live, you shall live also. Amen. Let us pray. Rest eternal. Grant unto those, O Lord, who have gone. And let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And at this time, we've been in the book of John, amen? Gosh, you're in the last gospel.
It seems like we just started the New Testament in October. Oh, we did. Okay, okay. And we're in the book of Acts next week. Oh, my gosh, what, what to pick and preach from there. Wow, so much good stuff. I'm just going to invite you. We're going to kind of go through all of John 9 today, now and in our message. So I invite you to stand for the reading of God's holy word as Shannon uh, brings to us in John chapter 9. The first 15 verses. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This happened so the power of God could be seen in him. We must quickly carry out the tasks assigned to us by the one who sent us. The night is coming, and then no one can work. But while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. Then he spit on the ground, made mud with the saliva, and spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. He told him, go wash yourself in the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. So the man went and washed and came back seeing. His neighbors and others who knew him as a blind beggar asked each other, isn't this man who used to sit and beg? Some said he was, and others said, no, he just looks like him. But the beggar kept saying, yes, I am the same one. They asked, who healed you? What happened? He told them, the man they called Jesus made mud and spread it over my eyes and told me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash yourself. So I went and washed, and now I can see. Where is he now, they asked. I don't know, he replied. Then they took the man who had been blind to the Pharisees, because it was the Sabbath that Jesus had made the mud and healed him. The Pharisees asked the man all about it, so he told them. He put the mud over my eyes, and when I was washed away, I could see. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Yes, yeah, some miracles are that complex. Got some mud in my eyes, and now I see. Oh, my goodness. Praise God. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, we're going to invite the kids to come up for a children's moment. While you're up here, then I'll do prayer after that. So we invite you guys all to come on up. All right. Okay. Good morning. How are you guys? Good. So can someone tell me, tell me in the mic, what we have been learning on Wednesday nights? <laughs> She's pointing to the person next to her. <laughs> Nobody knows what we've been learning on Wednesdays? The fruits of what? Can anybody tell me what the nine fruits are? You got it? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. Gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Good job. Awesome. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> okay, so we have been learning about the fruits of the Spirit, and they have been working so hard memorizing those nine fruits of the Spirit. So one of them we've spent special time on and focused on is kindness. And so we're going to have Pastor Jeff come up here. So it was Pastor Pre Appreciation Month in October, so the kids have been working hard on oh, well, appreciating you. our pastor. So I've got something good over here for you, Pastor. Let well, thank you. <laughs> grab it. Thank you. Amen. Oh. <laughs> so the kids made you guys some cards that you can oh. take some time to read, but we also made you a poster. Well, well thank you. So the kids were asked what... The word pastor means to them. Okay. Here, come on up. Here, I'm going to read it out loud. So they took some time and we asked them, and we Sorry, asked Jack. them what each letter um, for pastor meant to them and what you, um, Pastor Jeff, mean to them. So P is for preaching and pie, <laughs> and A is for always praying for us, S is for self control, T is for teaches us the Bible, O is for obeying God. 
in our respects and loves church families. So these are what the kids um, think about you and value in you as their pastor. So I hope you enjoy uh, the cards. And it says, we do not, or donut, donut. <laughs> want you to miss a chance to say donut. thank you, pastor. So we yeah. do have a box of donuts for you, too. Well, well <laughs> life is good. Life is good. Well, thank you all. This is this is very wonderful, and I, I deeply appreciate it. We pray for you guys all the time, and it's such an honor to watch you guys just be so excited with Jesus. Amen? Well, thank you, Shan. That was very kind of you guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You guys want to give him his donuts? Oh, no. No, you don't want to give You want to give it to him? You probably want to keep them. Well, thank you. I accept these on behalf of the Belmer family. <laughs> But again, thank you all very much, and I appreciate all the cards and notes and uh, special thank yous that you all have been giving us. Thank hey, you so much. Well, okay, yeah, I'll save it for you when you're done. And and you guys can go to children's church. And you, oh, I'm sorry, you want to, Lord, bless these kids and the gifts they give us, especially the gifts of just laughter and love and smiles. Bless their families, bless their schools. And just keep them growing stronger in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so very much. I'll, get, I'll bring it back to you next week. <laughs> All right. Amen. Praise God. I like how this word donuts there. That's uh, that's interesting. Well, thank you. Hey, just as we uh, just enter in a time of prayer, I want to uh, lift up this morning, uh, continue to lift up Rachel Gammon in our prayers, and also uh, lift up uh, Wes. You got a big day on Tuesday? Well, we're going to... We're going to anoint you and pray all over you. Is that okay? But no, you stay right there. Okay. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your servant, Wes. Just the beautiful man that he is and faithful in so many ways. Man of prayer and faith. And we just surrender, Lord, to his day and the infirmities that this deals with. And all over his body, Lord, be Lord over every single molecule and situation. And Lord, I just ask you, Lord, top of his head, the bottom of his feet, your healing presence in Jesus' name. And Lord, we lift up Rachel and others, Lord, that are struggle with their infirmities. And Lord, I especially, Lord, lift up an unspoken. It's just really heavy on my heart. And, and uh, we just pray your anointed presence, Lord, be all over it. And, we just want to, Lord, give you glory, give you praise. And I pray, Lord, this morning that your word and the message that's brought will touch some people very seriously today in a very good way, in a freeing way, in the strong name of Jesus as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And Lord, we ask a blessing upon the gathering of these tithes and offerings. We give you thanks and praise, Lord. Lord, we know that grocery prices, some things have tripled and even quadrupled. Lord, we know, Lord, that uh, many people are playing games. You know the situation, Lord, of nations that do not declare you even exist want to redo the financial markets and everything. And we just ask, Lord, your hand to be upon us. Guide and direct us, Lord. Where we may be trembling your calm for your perfect love cast out all fear so bless this offering we give to you bless the gift givers and those that will receive in the strong and powerful name of jesus christ we pray amen
I requested that we sing this song this morning, and I've shared this story with you before, but I'm going to share it again. Um, this song became very meaningful to me probably when I was in my early teens because one Sunday at our little church at Parkersburg where I grew up, an elderly gentleman got up and sang this song, and I wasn't really familiar with him. He wasn't a member of our church. And when he sang this song, there was no doubt that he was very sure. He was very sure. And it was very touching and moving to my heart. And so this song has always been special to me ever since that. And as I was thinking about this song this week, I thought, you know, now it says here this song, I don't know if it was written in 1944, but at least that was probably when it was published. And it's called In Times Like These, and I'm sure that the message was very fitting for that time. And when Mr. Ridgely sang it to us in Parkersburg, I'm sure it was very fitting for that time. But it's also very fitting for our time. So will you join us in singing in times like these? in my mind and the words lord that you've helped prepare lord touch lord your beloved sons and daughters that are here today and listening on the radio and following along on facebook and other dimensions thank you lord sow the seeds and bring in harvest in jesus name amen you may be seated Raymond, second annual Thanksgiving bash. This was really good. All 
Then he has a line going through the welcome. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I'm just saying. We love Raymond and Shannon and all that they bring to us. Thank you so much. And he's a, he tolerates me, and I appreciate that. <laughs> Ephesians 1, 7 says, In Christ we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. It's simply incredible what Jesus has done for you. <laughs> it's stunning what God has done for you. Done for me. Didn't you just read, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world. Okay, but to save it. Redemption. The reason I, I like the gospel of John so much is because John, of all the disciples, John was the most in tune with who Jesus was and his mission. That's why it says, and John the disciple Jesus loved, and that's agapao, okay, unconditional. It's, it's not that he was the favorite of the disciples. It was that Jesus knew John understood what Jesus was all about. And that's why John's gospel is so much in depth about oneness with God. And, and all. A lot of red letters in John. This morning, scripture tells the story of a miracle which brought a healing, a redemption, a restoration, a man bringing him back into community <laughs> at least for a few minutes. And then we see the religious spirits rise up because God was getting out of their box again. And religion... Religious people can't stand when God gets out of his box. and He does something a little different than what they're expecting. And Shannon read from uh, John 9, 1, it says, As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Never saw a day. Never saw any light. Totally blind. Total darkness. And his disciples said, Why was this man born blind, Jesus? Was it because of his sins or his parents' sins? And hear what Jesus said. It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins, Jesus answered. This has happened so the power of God could be seen in him. A blind man was going to see the power, see the power, see the power of God work through him. Some infirmities exist that bring glory to God. I shared with you about the lady in Capernaum when we were praying for her who was on our trip back, I think, in 2021, uh, the, the, the trip we took, and uh, she had a brain aneurysm, and we prayed and anointed her uh, with oil and prayed over her at, in the synagogue in Capernaum, and she was instantaneously healed of her brain aneurysm, documented by doctors. That brought glory to God. I shared to you about Bishop Ellis Kumbo from Uganda. I met him when I was in Kenya. He's a, a bishop of the Anglican Church over there. And he shared with me before he was saved, he died and was dead for three days, rotting, and they had dug his grave and ready to throw his body in. But some missionaries came into the village, heard the wails of the, 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 the mourning, the funeral dirges going on, entered the hut, laid their hands, and said, in the name of Jesus, rise. And a man who had been dead and decaying came back to life immediately. That'll preach and give glory to God. My friend Jack Johnson down in Metropolis, when he gave his life to Jesus, things just started popping all over the place. He had cancers here that began to disappear. He had a big tumor on his kidney. And one doctor wanted to do a surgery that would have killed him. And another doctor said back, says, well, we're going to try our best. They got in there, and they said, we've never seen a tumor just sitting there lying there saying, just, just pluck me off. <laughs> Jack has lots of stories 
about Jesus moments. And whenever he's in the doctor's office, he goes, let me tell you about my Jesus. And the doctors go, I, I, we're listening. Linda Miller, just one of our prayer warriors of our church. Right here, Prairie Rail, 2019, it was May. I was in here, we were doing like a 24, 36-hour prayer, prayer vigil, getting ready for Tom Atkins to come and, and host a revival here. And she said, I got saved right here in 1962. And she knelt down and we began to pray. And she told me later there was this energy from God that touched her. And... What she had been struggling with was lupus. Was she says she got up and she hasn't really had a complaint ever since. Is that accurate? Back pain. It's never returned back. And you'd had it for a long time. Yeah. Praise. That'll preach. A blind man. A no seeing guy. The optics, they weren't there. He'd never seen anything before. And yet he sees. And the religious people rejoice. Verse 13 says, They took the man who had been blind to the Pharisees. There, we know where this is going. Because it was on the Sabbath that Jesus had made mud and put it on his eyes and healed him. And the Pharisees asked the man all about this. So he told him, the man says, he put mud over my eyes, and when I washed it, I could see. This miracle happened at the Pool of Siloam, a couple of blocks south of the temple. The Pool of Siloam is a cool place to visit. Some of you that went with us to, to Israel were able to go to the Pool of Siloam. It was uncovered, uh, rediscovered in around 2004, it's the very place where this blind man went and washed his face and saw again. Blind since birth. Did, did, you, did you know he was blind since birth? Do you understand how huge that is? He didn't have to train his eyes. Everything was just like he'd always seen. Blind since birth. Jesus spit into some mud after first proclaiming, I am the light of the world. Oh, talk about light again from last week. I am the light of the world. Spits, makes some paste, puts it on his eyes. Now go to the pool of Salaam and wash your eyes. I have water right here from the pool of Salaam that came there. It's not magical water. It's a point of reference. It's water that, if it could speak, could tell us some stories. Now, I've said for years, if you want to mess up a church, if you really want to mess up this church, then have a full-blown miracle happen. Have a full-blown miracle happen. And we see this in the next section in chapter 9. If you're able, we please stand. Let's read about the drama that happens in chapter 9. 16 through 34. And some of the Pharisees said, This man, Jesus, is not from God, for he has done work on the Sabbath. Others said, But how could an ordinary sinner do such miraculous signs? So there was a deep division and opinion among the Pharisees. Then the Pharisees again questioned the man who had been blind and demanded, What's your opinion about this man who healed you? The man replied, I think he must be a prophet. The Jewish leader still refused to believe the man had been blind from birth and, and could now see. So they called his parents and they asked them, is this your son? Was he born blind? If so, why can he see now? And his parents replied, we know this is our son, that he was born blind. But we don't know how he can see or who healed him. Ask him, he's old enough to speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who had announced that anyone saying Jesus was the Messiah would be expelled, kicked out of the synagogue. And that's why they said, he's old enough, he can answer for himself, ask him. So the second time they called the man who had been blind, but now sees, and told him, 
God should get the glory for this because we know this man, Jesus, is a sinner. I don't know whether this Jesus is a sinner, the man said, but I know this. I was blind, but now I see. But what did he do, they asked. How, how did he heal you? Look, the man explained to them, exclaimed to them, I told you once, didn't you listen? Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? And then they began to curse him and say, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where this man comes from. Well, that's very strange, the man replied. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but the Lord is ready to hear those who worship him and do his will. Ever since the world began, no one has been able to open the eyes of someone born blind. If this man were not from God, he could not have done it. You were born a total sinner, they answered. You are trying to teach, are you trying to teach us? And then they threw him out of the synagogue. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It's the pool of Siloam. It's, it's where the, the very, very, the miracle happened here. And then they took him to see the Pharisees. But this very spot where they have running waters to this day. I want to talk about the word redeemed as it has to do with, with your lives and also weave it into this message this morning. Redeem, it, uh, redeem has four or five definitions, and each one gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And the first one comes from 1 Corinthians 6, 20, that says, You were bought at a price, and therefore honor God with your bodies. You were bought. The word bought literally is a name that means part of redeemed. It comes out of that. It says, to enter the marketplace to make a purchase. Okay, so picture this. Entering the marketplace to make a purchase. You're going there to buy something. You've got some actions to do. Okay? It means in this context that there are Two things going on. Two actions this refers to. One, the marketplace is to put sinners into slavery. The other thing refers to getting sinners out of slavery. One has to deal with Satan putting you in chains, and the other has to do with Jesus coming to get you out of those chains. Romans 6, 17, 20 says, We are slaves to sin. Moreover, the Bible says we were sold under sin. Romans 7, 14 states, So the trouble is not with the law, for, the spiritual, for, the, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I'm sold unto sin. And because, sin, because of sin, we are all sold to the enemy. We are then transferred into the kingdom of darkness. You and I are actually owned by sin, by evil, by darkness. But also that verse means, yet Jesus enters the slave market. He has come into the slave market where you are on the auction block, chained and ready to be sold, where we have all been there. But Jesus has come to do a transaction on our behalf. He's there to do a transaction. The pool of Siloam. The word redeem. Another definition of redeem comes out of uh, Titus 2.14. It says, he, Jesus, gave himself for us to redeem us from the wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own eager to do what is good. That Jesus gave himself for us to get redeemed. The New Living Translation says he gave his life to free us from every kind of sin. To cleanse us, to make us his very own people. 
So redeem here literally means to set a prisoner free by payment of the ransom. So you've got someone coming into the marketplace wanting to buy. And another word for redeem means I've come to pay the ransom. I've come to pay the ransom. I was in Estes Chapel at Asbury Theological Seminary, my first full semester in the spring of 1999. I'm sorry, 1998. And there was an African evangelist there. And he began his message saying this. Are you here to take your head out? <laughs> I have no idea what he's talking about. He began to unpack about taking your head out. He says, during the slave trade, one, one African tribe would sell out another African tribe. Okay? There was a lot of that. Okay? And people would find out that their loved ones had been sold into slavery or were being gathered to be shipped off into America or the other areas. And they, they heard about that. They would run as hard as they could, as far as they had to run to get down to the boat dock. And when they got down there, they would see their loved ones in shackles and a, and, 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 and a collar around their neck with a, with, with, a, with a lock on it. And they would begin to barter and plead. And many, many times, the slave traders, they just wanted money. And they would let them be paid off. And then they'd go up to their loved ones. They'd undo the lock and they'd open up the, the, the neck collar, and they would literally take their head out. They'd become free and take their head out to set a prisoner free by payment or ransom. Another definition of redeem comes from Galatians 3.13. It says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung from a pole. And uh, other version says, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. And this word for redeem here, Christ redeemed, this word for redeemed, it means in Greek, it's literally translated as, when per and this is from Rob McCorkle, when purchasing, there is a removal of what was purchased from where it was. In other words, it says, when you're purchased, you no longer linger there. When you're purchased by Christ, you don't linger anymore in the darkness. You get out of there. You don't sit around, well, that was close. No, you get away from the darkness, and you just run with the light of Christ that's all over you. No longer lingering. It also means you're taken from an atmosphere of unholiness into an atmosphere of the holy. So God is not only releasing you, he is literally transforming you. In Christ we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Redemption. You are redeemed only by what Jesus gave, his blood. See, without shedding the blood of Christ, there is no forgiveness of sins. If you think you're going to make it to heaven because of some other way, or you and God got your own thing going, no, you're really dealing with the devil. Because <laughs> you've got to accept his sacrifice for you. The blood of Christ. Other slide says, moving you from an atmosphere from the unholy into the holy. That's what happens when you literally allow the blood of Jesus to wash over and you accept Jesus' payment for you. Um, you don't, but, but it, that's how your sins are paid for, how you're paid for. When holiness comes, restoration and worship begins. In John 9, 35 through 38, Finishing up chapter 9, when Jesus heard what had happened to the man that was blind and now can see, he searched out and found the man and asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? 
The man answered, Jesus said, Who is he, sir? I want to believe him. And Jesus said to him, You have seen him. He is speaking to you right now. Yes, Lord, I believe, the man said. And he began to worship Jesus. You see, when the lost get found, when the rejected get restored, when the infirmities that... Uh, are, 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 are touched by the Holy Spirit and your life is given back to you. When miracles happen, worship really gets louder and louder and louder. Worship, worship, worship. And that's what's saying here in Ephesians about redemption. In Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with his riches and God's grace. And this word for redemption here, in Christ we have redemption, literally means ransom and also liberated. Not only just liberated, but bring to completion. Not just bring to completion, but returning to something fully completed back to the way of its original intent. We were created to walk with God in the cool of the day, and then a big hiccup happened. Adam and Eve dropped the ball bad. What well, just wasn't a fumble, it was all of our fumbles. And in order for us to be able to pick up and get going, we have to go through the blood. And when we accept and meet Jesus on his terms, in his ways, he brings you back into completion. That's what Jesus done. He enters the marketplace he sees you up on the auction block, on the sin of slave auction block. He puts his hand up and says, I'm buying that one right now. And he buys you. He takes your head out. He then takes you out of that darkness and brings you into great light. And then he says, hey, let's go back to how it was always meant to be. Restoration. Being pure. Free to live for God. There is more power in one drop of blood, friends, from Jesus Christ than all the parts of the kingdom of Satan put together. If you call yourself a Christian, that's why Satan hates you so much. Because you are so feared. Because you're blessed. You're anointed. It's over you. And he can't, he can't, he can't stand you. But that's okay. Well, I'm going to ask you, as the whack house of waxer comes up, and just thank you for blessing us today, <laughs> to come to the redeeming waters of Siloam. I'm just going to throw something out there this morning. If you have a burden, if there's an infirmity, if your faith is failing, or there's doubt. If you're needing a breakthrough from some sort of thing, come to the redeeming waters of Siloam. Come up. I'm going to dip my hand in the water and put it on yours, and we're going to pray for whatever that is, and you're not even going to say anything to me. We're just going to let the Holy Spirit move into that, okay? If Jesus can take a person that's never seen before, and tells them to go and wash their face. This is just a point of contact. Same water. It's not magical. It's just the man was obedient to Jesus. And because of that, a major breakthrough happened. So I invite you as we sing to come to be washed. It's an act of faith. A step away from the world's way of doing things. And just putting on Jesus. So I invite you to come as we sing. I invite you to stand as we sing.
might be in the Guinness Book of World Records and singing that verse as many times as we did. But the presence of the Lord was here. And I'm just going to let him do what he wants to do. He just wants a church just willing to let him do what he wants to do. He will never violate his word. He'll never set you up to fail. Keep your eyes upon him. Amen. Because God is good. And all the time. You get an extra hour of sleep next week. Thank you. Have a great week. God bless you. Amen.